All right, so I'd like you to take a moment to close your eyes. And I'd like you to take note of the person on your left and the person on your right. And now I'd like you to take note of all the people in this room. Each of us have experiences and stories just as vivid as our own. All right, you can open your eyes. And there's a word for this realization, or at least somebody came up with a word. His name is John Koenig, and he coins this Sonder. So it's the realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own. So I'm not actually here to talk about the stories of the people in this room, sorry, but I'm here to talk about the stories of researchers and participants in malaria vaccine cl clinical trials in low resource settings. So specifically, I'd like to focus on the perspectives from Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. So vaccine trust begins with the research that we're doing on vaccination. A little bit of background about malaria. So malaria is an infectious parasitic disease. Um, the majority of the cases are caused by Plasmodium falciparum. And there were actually 219, there are about 219 million cases of malaria annually. It's vectored by a mosquito. And here we actually have uh, quite a nice image of the parasite inside of a human red blood cell. So between the year 2000 and 2015, we made a lot of progress in terms of controlling the malaria parasite. Um, on the left, you see a map, and you see a map of predomin predominantly sub-Sahara Africa, and you see a lot of red and yellow. Um, and this indicates a very high level of transmission of, of uh, Plasmodium falciparum, so the malaria parasite. And on the right, fast forward 15 years, you see a lot of this is actually reduced. So this translates into a 66% uh, reduction in malaria cases over 15 years. So how did we actually achieve this progress? Well, a lot of it had to do with insecticide spraying, insecticide treated bed nets, early diagnosis of the malaria parasite, and actually early treatment. And this actually, this is, we don't have a vaccine yet for malaria, so this is actually what achieved all of this progress. But we've actually had a problem since 2015. So this progress has stagnated mainly because of the vector becoming resistant, the mosquito becoming resistant to insecticides, and also the parasite becoming resistant to the way that we diagnose and treat it. So this is really pushed for a malaria vaccine to be generated and also the clinical trials to take place. So that brings me to the leading malaria vaccine candidate, RTSS. It targets children between the ages of 15 to 17 months. And the goal is really to reduce severe malaria in children under the age of five. And this vaccine actually is now entering its phase four, its pilot studies in Kenya, Malawi, and Ghana. And I focused on the previous clinical trial, so the phase three clinical trial. And this trial was actually carried out in seven African countries across 11 different sites, enrolling 15 and a half thousand children. And the reason that we chose to look at it is because it's really taking place across social and health systems that are very, very diverse. And what we wanted to do is to understand the researcher and the caregiver experience during these clinical trials in low resource settings. And we wanted to identify the ethical challenges associated with carrying out clinical trials in low resource settings. And then the implications that these have on the ways in which we design this research. So what we did is we went to Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, and we interviewed caregivers of pediatric participants enrolled in the clinical trial. So we did these, this across four different sites, um, and we focused on the RTSS, so this leading malaria vaccine candidate, in Tanzania and Kenya. And then we also had a comparative control looking at a phase 2B malaria vaccine trial in Uganda. 
And we also interviewed frontline researchers to kind of understand the other perspective of the researcher on the ground who were involved with the phase three RTSS. So this was in Kenya, and a lot of these researchers are also continuing on with malaria vaccine research today. And this is actually a picture of um, us in Tanzania. So this is me with my research collaborators there. So I really wanna highlight the importance of when I'm doing research in these settings of a team and having a good support system in terms of translators, research assistants, and also gatekeepers to go into the community and work closely, um, closely with local people. So um, one of the kind of the main thing that came out of this is the importance when we're doing vaccine research of not only looking at the trial setting in kind of an isolated state. So um, both the researchers and the caregivers, they're inhabiting realities outside of the clinical trial. So both in their community and in their domestic settings. And they're making decisions out of their political, social, and economic contexts. And predominantly what we found is that caregivers are really driven by the economic situation they're in, particularly because it's low resource settings. So in a lot of these cases, there's a big structural disparity between the kind of medical care that they're getting in the clinical trial and the kind of medical care they have access to in their communities. So this structural disparity when it came to medical options for the caregiver <laughs> was really a big theme that came out of our interviews. And here's a quote from a caregiver that I think really drives this home. Before the research study, when you would visit the government hospital, after the tests, they would tell you to go and buy the medicines, and sometimes you don't have the money. But after my child joined the research study, the situation changed. I am grateful as my child was getting the malaria tests and given medicines in a sealed bottle and not the opened ones. So this kind of communicates the complexity of doing clinical trials in these settings when there's already not very much access to the medicines required in the local setting. And as a researcher on the other side working in the clinical trials, so they're often living in these communities for five, six years. And they, really, they can really struggle with inhabiting kind of their role as a researcher and also their role as um, their other roles in the community. So a researcher said to me, it's difficult as a person, as a human, as a mother, because sometimes kind of the obligations they feel or the moral obligations they feel conflict between their role to the protocol in the clinical trial and the things they feel being a part of the community in the setting. So coming from the ethics perspective, we really found there's a conflict of principles. So conflict between autonomy and beneficence. So when you're operating in an area where you don't have um, viable medical options as kind of a baseline, this structural disparity leads to limited autonomy. And also the principle of beneficence because creating a malaria vaccine is an act of beneficence, and as is providing medical care and reducing child mortality. In fact, child mortality was reduced by 70% in one of the clinical trial sites that I looked at, which is very, very significant, just from providing basic medical care. So how do we deal with this conflict of principles when we're designing clinical trials for vaccines? Well, we chose to look at it through something called complexity theory, and complexity theory, they, it's complex adaptive systems. They describe systems that have components of unpredictability, nonlinearity, iteration, interdependence, and emergence. So things like animal swarms, our own immune systems, weather patterns, human communities, these are all examples of complex adaptive systems. So we have a human community and we have a clinical trial. The human community with complex social networks and a clinical trial with rigorous protocols to adhere to, and they come together forming this complex adaptive system. And what happens is what we wanted to find out in terms of the clinical trial sites that we look at. So we mapped it out. We mapped the contextual realities, and on the left we have the human community, and on the right we have the clinical trial, and on the bottom we have 
the external environment interacting. So I don't have time to actually go into the detail of mapping this out, but it really highlights the contextual realities relevant to clinical trials in low resource setting. And what, by mapping this out, what we found is that we need to recognize the role that frontline researchers have and we need to give them the tools to build trust. The second thing is identify the ways in which to support these researchers that's appropriate for the context based on these realities. And also develop collaborative partnerships with local stakeholders so that we can actually strengthen the local medical system. And by building trust in vaccine research, we can actually build trust when this vaccine gets rolled out. Thank you.